um, and they have actually tried to get rid of the rodents on their own. They've hired another company that can't help them because they can't figure out where they're coming in at, and so they called us. Yep. Welcome back everybody. It's the Pest Control Guys. We're stuck out here at a house because Kevbo's got us on a new assignment. Mission, mission accomplished. <laughs> mission, <laughs> mission, yeah. So our new assignment is we had a comment uh, from one of our, uh, one one of our, our viewers. viewers asked for us to specifically talk about how do mice and rodents get into your house and how, what can you do? Right. How do you fix it? So we found a home that, uh, that has a mouse issue they couldn't get it under control, so they called a competitor of ours, and they said they couldn't figure out where the mice are coming in at, and they couldn't get rid of them. They so, sound really uh, capable. Yeah, and so they called <laughs> us. They said, we're calling mice, and we're well, gonna we, figure it out. We, we drove up and we noticed right away, so we're gonna show you guys some things that can be worked on at your home, as well as this house. Let's do it. So first thing that we do when we come to a house if somebody says that, and in fact, it doesn't matter what house every house we go to we do an inspection but this one specifically is for rodents so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start on the outside and what i'm looking for is open penetrations um they've been told that nobody can figure out how the mice are getting into the home so i'm here um, today to help figure out how they're getting in the home and i always start on the left corner of the house and i work my way around so right here uh, we're at the left corner of the house and if you've watched any of our previous videos you can see one of the biggest um issues is right here where mice are gonna get in. So we can definitely see that this has been chewed on or it's been wood rot. Mice can definitely get in through this area here. So we're gonna recommend to the homeowner that they seal those areas up. Either they can foam them and paint them, they can replace the, the wood rot and seal it, but we're gonna recommend that they do Plus, something there. Plus on top of that, Kevin, um, as I'm looking here, anytime you see the weathering that has been eaten away right here near the uh, the corner. Mice are going to get in through that area as well. It actually looks like there's mice chewing, been chewing on that corner there yep. too. And that's actually all four of the garage door corners. Yep. So right here, yep. you got it here too. All you need is a dime size, so about the size of my finger, and they can get in. And then interesting, here on the top of this door. It's just open all the way across. So mice and can you got this big spot here. Mice can crawl up this corner, no like nobody's business, and get right into the house. Well, and to be honest with you, they really don't need to climb very far because you got gaps right here, and you got a gap right at the bottom. So. And then here's another uh, part here that's a good one. If you want to come down and take a look at this gap here, things can get right in between there, and it doesn't matter if it's a mouse. Um, any pest can get through that and um, so those those are the first things that we saw but let's let's take a walk around and see what else we can find um, basically we're gonna walk around the perimeter here and we're gonna be looking for any type of open penetrations um, any anything that a mouse can fit through so again dime size holes right so what about this right here I can already feel somebody's been crawling up through there any any time you get these older homes you're going to get a lot of settling you're going to get a lot of stress fractures a lot of your wood is actually going to pull away from the home those are all access points we say for insects but obviously for rodents as well yeah so you got to take all that old wood rot off and you've got to seal those areas up best you can otherwise they're going to be coming in and out yeah and, and not to mention even if you think a pest can't get in there water is going to get in there it's going to create wood rot and then guess what now you've got your carpenter ants and you've got your termites uh you, you've got their food their harborage right. and their water right there yep. so you, you want to make sure all this stuff is sealed so, around the home again if you can you've got some old uh termite damage here but there is a massive gap and it just goes right up behind the house they can live in there and har uh, harborage for them in there so again, mud daubers, wasp nests, spiders, anything that's a big, uh, big one that you'd want to fill and seal. So right, right here as well, you got a hole, goes right into the doorway. 
Great place for access. Okay. So you've got you've got what's called the lip or the the, the top of where the um, your footing is. All of your house starts on top of that footing. Foundation wall. Your foundation wall. You can get gaps in there, and those bugs will, and rodents will go right inside the home if it's not sealed up correctly. If the sill plate isn't right. <laughs> So we got over to this side of the house. We talked about air conditioning lines before and some of the areas that they can get in. They've sealed this one pretty decent, but there are gaps in some of this. So these are the areas that you want to look for. Ooh, like right there. This is one of the areas that we're going to want to address underneath this box bottom of that line they've done a good job here but they just didn't go around the whole thing so that's a potential entry point well well Ben this uh, putty the co contractors putty that they put around these types of things it's only good for about three to five years and then you have to replace it because it'll actually shrink and yep. pull away and you can feel right here there's a full-on finger area where a mouse can get into that area so check out your old uh, putty, replace that if you need to. Cole, well, unfortunately with a, a deck like this, and we see a lot of these things, this is just uh, asking for harborage and it doesn't matter, raccoons, foxes, uh, you name it, will get underneath these, they're, they're enclosed. So, so they're dried out underneath. So it gives them a good place for harborage. They've got entrance and exits. Um, and so, well, the whole neighborhood is full of uh, pin oak, white oak. And so you've got all these acorns and I guarantee you, they can take those under there and live without any, <laughs> any predators going after them and they can keep their food nice and cool and, and dry. Yeah, so well, here's the thing with this much food source, you're gonna have the problem of if you put bait out, are they gonna take it right. when they've got plenty of food? So you may have to resort to snap traps, you may have to resort to live traps, you may have to resort to a way to, to draw them in other than food, because there's a ton of this acorns. This whole yard is, everywhere. is acorns. Yeah, they, uh, the, the homeowner had commented that um, the traps that the other company put inside were, were never getting touched. And that's because of the food source. Here. Right. They're just looking for a place to live, to be out of the weather. So, so you gotta seal it up. Yeah. You gotta use glue traps. You've gotta use stuff that isn't just drawing them with food or bait. And, and mice are smart. So what I mean by that is, is if that mouse has been living here for a while, they're gonna know if we just put a bait station down, they're not gonna go to it because they know it's not supposed to be there. Well, and so we talk about, yeah, the yard's full of acorns. Okay, so what do homeowners do? Well, cut down the tree. You can either cut down your tree, which is expensive, yeah, or get out and clean up those acorns. If you're not going to clean up your acorns, guess what? The mice and, are going to have and, food. And, and they're hard to clean up because I do it every year and I'm only getting half of a tree and it is a pain in the neck, but you got to do it. Well, what if my neighbors don't clean up their acorns? Well, that's some of the problem. Getting, well, getting it's, the it's a problem, the but guess what? Guess where the mice are going to go? Neighbor's house. Yeah. So if you do your part, you can pull the mice away from your house. Uh, the other thing I'd like to point out about this too is, so this deck is probably 25 foot wide. So now we've got 25 feet of space that anywhere under there could be an entry point. Well, and it's completely inaccessible, right? right. Yeah. So we can't, we can't tell. I tell you, if it was us, there would be a trap right next to this, this area here. Well, let's jump up here and take a look and see what we've got up on, up on, on the deck here. Yep. So um, as we go in here, we're just, again, we're just looking for entry points. Um, we've got a nice little screened in deck here. Obviously with this, we recommend having a hard closed door and having a sweep on the bottom because obviously it just allows 
um, any type of pests or insects to come inside. Um, but as we look around here, we want to look underneath this. So right here, you can see that gap. So mice can come up right underneath there and climb in there. Of course, we don't know what's behind there, um, but there could be plenty of access points. <clears throat> so here, here we have an open dryer vent. And with that, that's a, that's a huge entry point. Hey, that's a super highway. That's, a, that's what Ryan would like to refer to as a super highway. Um, and that needs to have a cover on it. Looks like they took the cover off when they built the deck because the deck boards kind of maybe got in the way. Um, but at the end of the day, I see feces in there. I see mouse feces in there. Um, and obviously that's going to connect to your dryer, but that stuff is so flimsy they could have easily chewed a hole through it. And now they're getting to the subfloor of the home, which allows them to get anywhere through the house. Also, oh, yep. that, there is a piece of the, the trim that is missing that goes right into the home. You've got to seal those areas up. Well, and we came over to the back side of this deck, and it, it's an expensive deck, but we did find an access into it so we don't have to pull decking. There is not one bait station under there. Whoever the technician was with this other company did not want to get under there. Let me think, let me ask you a question, guys. Would we be under there with a the bait station? 100%. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> Why? Because we did the inspection, and on our notes, it's going to ask to say, "Hey, we found a, a cross or a, a door to underneath the deck. Please make sure you put a monitoring station under there or a bait a bait box." So they're making, they're doing some repairs to this oh, area. That's perfect. But you notice right here, this has been chewed. There's a perfect mouse hole right there, and that's where the mice are getting in over here because they've chewed this, yep. and now they've got a, a big hole. I mean, just. Just looking at this whole area, you can see where they've chewed, yep. and then there's other spots here where they could possibly get in, but that's definitely a spot that they're going in. Unfortunately, um, this home has had a mouse issue for quite some time, and that's why they're seeing what they're seeing on the inside. That's why they're seeing them in the, 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 uh, the stove. That's why they're seeing them in the kitchen, in the toilet. Well, <laughs> I, I'm sitting here looking at the whole outside and they've done a little bit of cleanup here but there are years and years of leaves and debris here those mice can actually build nests down in this and i guarantee you they have and then they just come right up the siding there's a gap that big into the house right here but those mice will live under these rocks and burrow you've got to clean this out and put new rock in it every year take the mulch out and and make it unlivable livable uninhabitable by the mice yeah and it looks like this is kind of a phase just like all of us we're always working on our homes so this looks like they've they've done some remodeling and obviously this has probably been underneath the deck and wasn't easily accessible another thing is the grades a problem here too um so if you take a look at where this 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 kicks out now all the water's running back to the uh back to the house which is going to create moisture uh and uh, a water source for the pests Close. Okay, so I've got my foot on this bait box. This is what the fourth or fifth one as we've come around. Yeah, I think fourth or fifth. I'm not. I'm covering up a logo so that we're not picking on anybody in particular. So they don't know that they're as bad as we say they are. So <laughs> here's the problem. We know that they've tried. They put several of these bait boxes out, filled them up. That's what they made an attempt. They made an attempt. So maybe a lazy technician just, and they've overkilled. The amount that they've put down is more than enough. It, the well, problem is they're not taking into consideration the entry points or the other food sources. So this isn't going to do a lot, unfortunately. No, it, it's it's costing the company a lot of money to not get rid of the problem. Well, and it kind of seems to me like they're lackadaisically laid. They're not strategically placed like we would have placed them. It tells me they definitely didn't do an inspection on the home. Um, they told the homeowner verbatim that we can't find where the mice hole, the mice are getting in the house. And obviously it's a no brainer. It's a no question kind of where they're coming in. So that tells me there was an inspection done. Right. And, and guys, again, I, I can't emphasize this enough. The Harbridge, you know, I don't know if you guys watch some of those TV shows like alone where they go out and they have to have oh, yeah. an area That's where they're going to, yeah, they're going to yeah, yeah. stay um, out of the wind and, and have nice shelter and stay 30 warm. days to, yeah. Any of this harborage around the bottom of the home with leaves, acorn shells, sticks, grass clippings, the mice love that because they stay warm 
they they when it's cold out they can hang out there and they don't ever have to worry about it yep. but then when they've got access to the home on top of that mm -hmm. they never have to worry about leaving this place yep So get in on that one there. They've been living in between that. Back this is door a back door. Oh shit. So I don't know if you guys can see here, but there are mice droppings everywhere along here. Acorns. I can see a major hole right in the corner where it's eaten through and gone into the home. Okay, so we've made it on the inside, we've completed our inspection on the outside, and we've shown you folks some really good um, places to look and what to watch out for. Um, so now we're gonna kinda come on the inside and we're gonna go kinda look at some areas where the homeowner was telling us that they were having some problems. Um, and this is kinda right on the back side of the deck area where we were seeing some of those mouse holes and whatnot. Um, so we know they're able to get into the, um, in between the subfloor here. So that old, entrance to the back door or to the um the deck door is right behind us so they can have access to this complete subfloor below and also they can crawl through the insulation and get to the attic as well um so let's take a look in here okay as we as we go one of the first places the homeowner had mentioned to us is she's got them in this is a indoor trash receptacle so we're going to pull that open and take a look and see what we see here you go, Ben. You got a better spot, buddy. So there's obviously droppings. And there's a gap back in the back. It's hard to tell. They can climb and get through here, but there's gaps pretty much everywhere you want to go. That's an interesting one, right? Well, let's take a look at this next cabinet over. So as I was getting explained, the homeowner has caught 30 20 or 30 mice in here with this trap. So this is something that she bought from the hardware store. And then this is the other company's trap that they put in. It's caught zero mice. Well, why? Why has it caught zero mice? Well, first well, of all, it's a glue board. Well, that, okay, that, which is fine. Right. It's it's not positioned properly. Okay, so it's, it's placement. the placement is key. It, it's not up against a wall. It's got nowhere that the mice will be coming in and out of as access points. It's just stuck out in the middle. So this trap looks like it was folded and tossed, tossed under there. Yeah. Yep. So if we've got an area that's a hot spot, we would probably talk with the homeowner about placing some extra glue boards and maybe laying them out flat right up against the wall so that it, that gets the best. Well, and if you've got 30 something mice, you're going to need area, more than just one. One's not going to cut it. Right. And, and to me, that would be, okay, let's clear this out. Let's get rid of everything out of here. For a okay. while. For least. a while. And let's get our traps in there. And she cleans this out constantly. And you can tell. She's she's probably just cleaned this out recently. And if you, if you can't see in the back, but there's there's a bunch of feces down there. Um, so that's an issue. Um, one of the other issues she said is right here is she opened this baby up <clears throat> one day. And there was a whole nest of mice alive baby baby mice in this so she hasn't opened it so we'll see what happens when we do open it oh no well, there's evidence now we look back so we definitely have some mice hanging out in the the cupcake cupcakes mm, yummy cupcakes So that's, is that seeds? What is that? Yeah. Yeah, so they brought, they've even got like a little oh, food source that they brought in. Um, that's only cause I just, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> here we go. Now we hit the money spot here. So again, as we were talking about below, they've moved and we've got another nest now in this drawer. So, um, so is that for sleeping? Is that for babies? What, what are we looking at here? Typically, it's more for babies. So yeah, somebody yeah. is getting ready to, to breed. breed. Yeah. Or already has. But and you can see how the mice have just kind of chewed up everything. 
any drawer or any cabinet space is kind of connected by an open frame. So I can reach up and over and access the lower section. So and if you can do that, see. the mice can do it as well. So anywhere where they can get into the system, they're going to be anywhere in the system here. Mice can crawl, they can jump, they can climb like nobody's business. I mean, they should be in the Olympics. I I've said it for years. So Kevin's still in talking with the homeowner. Yeah, he's going to do a walkthrough about what we can do and, and the areas that we're concerned with. There are quite a few. And this is classic. I'm sorry if we're going to pick on somebody else, but if they hire you for a job, take the time to listen at what the problem is, do a thorough inspection, and don't just put a bunch of bait boxes out thinking that's going to fix it. If well, it sounds like somebody was doing just a regular quarterly service and wanted to just knock it out in 15 or 20 minutes and be on to the next home. They didn't take the time that was needed for this specific homeowner to get rid of the problem. And really, how long of an inspection could you do on this by yourself? <laughs> it would take five to 10 minutes. That's not going to kill you to do five to 10 minutes. And then just do a quick walkthrough and say, look, this is the thing that we need to fix. This is a hole that we need to address. And you, you, you're you not the one that's going to have to do it a lot of times. A lot no. of times you can tell the homeowner, hey, this is what we recommend. And it's up to them. But if, if you're not going to point that out to them, how are they going to know? Yeah, they're not going to know. So that was the problem. I think the miscommunication was they want to know how to solve the problem, not just can you come and kill the mice. So part of this is going to be sealing it out. I'm sure that there's several mice in the neighborhood oh i'm sure so even if you kill a whole bunch of them in the house you're not going to solve the problem you yep. got to solve the problem by plugging up the holes and, and taking care of things definitely yep. i know if it was my wife <laughs> she, she'd be mad about just seeing a dropping right so i don't think it's a cleanliness issue i think it's a lot to do with the age of the house the age of the house and erosion some of the problem areas where they've chewed through and some of the gaps yep. and i think that's it some of the all of those could be solved all of it can be solved uh the flow of the water uh any of the you know the habitat areas on the exterior the food on the exterior it, a little bit of extra time goes a long ways to keep you know the mice from entering the home definitely you got to tell us the story that she said in there so Ryan. when we went into her house she goes hey i got to tell you guys a story I'm like yeah let's hear this her daughters are sitting there smiling i guess she had this rocking chair and she heard some squeaking and and noise in it for about a year thought it was a loose screw right? a loose screw finally one day something rolled out and she got to looking at it it was an acorn she thought what the heck and another one came out the other side of the chair she thought what the heck there and she picked it up and started looking into the chair she ended up finding 34 acorns in her rocking chair think they were bringing in acorns ryan i think they found a place to stash <laughs> their uh goods they were stashing goods all right in her rocking chair so yep yeah we're, we're the pest control guys we'll see you guys next time so we're we're leaving the house with the the mice problems and we're just sitting here talking about how i'm upset because yeah those guys were just lazy just let's put out another bait box that'll make them happy. well she's seeing a couple more mice let's put some bait in the bait box it, it hasn't worked for her as we were leaving we heard kevin ask her if they had ever showed her where the mice were coming in she's like no i didn't know these holes were here I would have had this fixed years ago. Yeah, and a lot of people want to fix stuff like that. Well, they yeah. don't want to live with no freaking mouse crap with their kids in the home. Yeah, so that it's just it frustrates me when people are lazy. Well, you've got all these door-to-door -door companies or these fly-by-the-night companies that come in and they, oh, I'm going to do this for you and I'm going to do that for you. But all they're trying to do is get your quarterly service. They're not trying to do a quality service for you. And to me, that's very, very upsetting as an owner of a company to know that there are technicians that are out there doing the bare minimum. If you're one of those technicians, shame on you. Step up your game, please, before I throat punch you. <laughs> Glad you stuck your finger in there instead of me. Did you feel a brown recluse while you were in there? No, but this. <laughs> Eat it. I'll give you five bucks to eat it. No chances. I don't do it. <laughs>
careful there, old man. I'm just, glad I'm not the one that has a hard time getting up, Kevin. <laughs> so I can... <laughs> Not in her head, but in the chair. And you can't do that. <laughs>